In this tutorial, I just want to play around with more of these brush settings and different things we could do with the brush. Uh, there's a lot we can do to get started with digital painting. There's a lot of different types of ways we can play with it. If I'm a photographer, designer, web developer, any type of way we could play around with these brushes. So some you might use a lot more of, some you might use less of, but there are so many different things we can do with brushes. So let's get started here. What I need to do first, uh, I want to open up my brush panel so I can go to my window and brushes and brush settings. Now there's two separate panels for these. My brushes alone are just all my separate brushes. Now I've loaded a ton of brushes in here. I don't use a lot of these obviously, but just to show you that you can get a lot of these. And what you could do to get them, if you have Adobe CC, you can go to your brushes panel and do your drop down and go to get more brushes. If you click on the get more brushes, what it does, it opens up in adobe.com and it shows you all of Kyle Webster's brushes that Adobe has acquired. And there are so many many brushes here and they're gorgeous they do amazing things there are great and you can download all of them and if you are to download one it's going to give you a download and it's going to go into your uh, your download and if you go in your downloads folder obviously I'm working on the Mac you can go into your applications <clears throat> and find uh, your Adobe Photoshop and under presets is where you're gonna go and with presets you're gonna just click on brushes and you're gonna load all those dot ABR files in here and once you load them in, you might have to shut down Photoshop, open it back up, more than likely you will. But once you open it, you can see all the brushes here, or you can uh, load the brushes, um, import brushes, sorry, but all the brushes will be here. Just click on them and that folder will open up because now uh, Photoshop has folders. So I can click on brush folders. I can click on my brush folder and my dry media brushes, that uh, the Kyle dry media brushes. And here are all the dry media brushes that are uh, available. I could also change around how I want these icons to look. The brush name, I can get rid of the brush name if I don't want the brush name. I can click on uh, the brush stroke to get rid of the stroke. I just want to see the tip or anything like that. If I want to show that, the one I did like was uh, show additional preset info, but I can't get that, which is okay. But I can see now a lot more of this information here, which is really, really nice. So there are a lot of different brushes, your general brushes, and then obviously your recent brushes. These are a lot of the most recent brushes you have been using. And you can change your size in the brush panel too. You can change that by using your number here or sliding it up, but also clicking on this. This would open up the brush settings, but the brush settings are already open here. And clicking on brushes panel here would open up the brushes panel, but it's already open here. I like to have both open so I can see all the different things that I could do with the brushes. So all my brushes are here, and then all the different things I could do with the brushes are here in this brush setting. Okay, so what I have to do first, I have separate artboards used here. I'm on this certain artboard, so I need to make sure that I'm working inside this artboard. In order to start painting, I do have to uh, make a new layer. So I'm going to click on a new layer in my layer panel right here. And also you'll notice I have my color panel open. Color panel will give me access to the uh, hue, saturation, brightness if I want to use that. The color wheel, which is fantastic. I can go down to and change it to color wheel to see my case lives or whatever. But the color wheel is going to give you a lot of access to a lot of different things you want. You could select it here or control it by moving up down here. Let's go through this really quickly. The hue is a different color. You can get the different hue you're going to look for. That goes all around the actual color wheel. Then if I look at my saturation of this particular red, I can get very little saturation to gray or a lot of that color saturation. Then of course I can go to my brightness and my lightness. Okay, so if I go my brightness and my darkness, so I go brighter and darker. So I have that control here. Now if I click around here or play around here, it's gonna move those for me. So I have a lot of control over the color I want. I could add the colors to my swatch. I could do a lot of different things here. But so I'm just gonna keep that color wheel open. Now what I can do, I'm just going to start and click around with my soft round brush and we've just seen all the different I'm just kind of going to go through all of these if I can the brush tip shape so many different types of shapes here we have our normal circle shape and it is soft we have our round and we have our round shape and it's a hard uh, so both of these sorry are round brushes but they either have a soft edge or a hard edge and you can control that within your panel here opacity and flow and smoothing you can control that right here in your hardness and softness right now it's 100 percent softness i can bring that down i can move it up change the size now we know that we can change our size also with our right and left a bracket on our keyboard. So that's a really quick way to do that. And once again, I'm using a mouse. I'm not using a stylus. You have way more control with the stylus on a Wacom tablet or any kind of tablet, but I'm just going to use a mouse because everyone has access to this mouse. Not everyone has access to a Wacom tablet. But once again, with the tablet, with a stylus, you have way more control, which I'm going to show you a little bit over here. 
So what I want to do, just look at the different tips we have here. So if I look at normal dry media, so you can make things wet and dry. But here I just have a normal one here, and that's nice dry. Let me zoom in a little bit so you get a good sense of that. So that's a dry brush. If I click on my wet media brushes, let's get something a little wet here. So now it's going to make something... Oh, it's making nothing because I think I changed up the presets on that one anyways. So let's see if I can get those back. Um, the scattering is fine. The shapes, that's fine. The brush, noise, and the wet can't access. That's okay. So I think I may have played around with this one a little bit already. I'm going to change up the color. Say okay. And my brush is on. 90% flow normal. And if I click on it, there we go. So that more is a wet brush where your edges are going to be a little bit less uh, or have some texture on them. But, um, sorry, that was still the dry brush. This one is not working for me. Oh, because it's a smudge. My apologies. See, see what happened. There's another thing I need to show you. So if I click on this brush, it shows me it is a brush. And I click on here. This is a smudge. So I would actually have to smudge an existing color, which is very nice. So the thing I liked about having these uh, additional preset info is on the right corner, it shows you the type of brush it is. Not all brushes are just paint brushes. Some are smudge brushes. Some, I believe, are mixer brushes. So uh, the majority of them will be brushes, normal paint brushes, but some actually uh, do something a little bit different. So you'd have to click on a brush and see what it does. Yes, that is still a brush. So now I have a wet brush. Now let me click, and there we go. See how it kind of spreads a little more when I paint? I click, and it spreads a little bit more, and that's a wet brush, as obviously these are all characteristic of actual brushes that we see that are wet or dry. So now there's a bunch of different ones here that also help me with a lot of different textures, special effects brushes. So I could have some kind of gain here, some pattern in there, a lot of different ones. So I just kind of want to, once again, this is a smudge brush. So I'm going to take that and kind of smudge it out a little bit. So a lot of different fun and different things we could do uh, with these half tones. Let's go to some half tones and let's paint on that. Once again, it's a brush tool. So I'm going to paint on that and get some half tone, like just gorgeous, gorgeous looks and feels and a lot of different ones. So if you go to Kyle Webster's uh, and get more, you're going to find a lot of these brushes and play around and it's, it's really great. Now, the interesting thing about these brushes as well, I'm going to click on this one. And, oh no, I'm going to click on a brush and was that a brush? This is a brush. That's a brush, there we go. So I have this brush that I'm using here. And now it has certain settings that are set up here in the brush settings panel. Shape dynamics, texture, dual brush, and smoothing. Now what I wanna do, I'm gonna take this brush, but I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more. I'm gonna show you all the different things you could do with it. So obviously some things can be locked or not locked. Right now everything is unlocked. So I'm just going to make a new brush with this brush and see what happens. I'm gonna say create new brush. And I'm just gonna call this my brush. Because I'm going to take, take this pre-existing brush and just say, okay, capture brush size and preset. No, I don't want to capture the brush size. I believe uh, I want to be able to change that brush size because right now it's at 60 and include the color. No, I don't want to include the color in the preset because I want to be able to change the color uh, or the color that it's going to be. Uh, if I have already a blue, I don't want to change right to the orange and I have to change it later. I want it to be whatever color I want it to be. Include in tool settings. Yes, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say, okay. And the brush shows up down here because it was in the special effects. What I'm going to do with that, I'm just going to click and drag it up. And I'm going to find my general brushes. And I'm going to do that because that's a great thing now. You can move these around wherever you want. If I want to make my own group, I could just say my brush. I've made a new group and I could actually just click these out of here. Go back and put those in the general. And here's now my brush. So I could actually group these, kind of like the way we move around with layers. Grouped layers, grouped, and just have individual layers. Well, this is kind of like a layer, and now I have a grouped layer. So now I have my own brush inside this layer, which is great, and it is a brush. So let's play around with it a little bit. So the shape dynamics. So I'm gonna paint this here. That is my brush currently. So with the shape dynamics, there's a lot I can do. So I'm gonna go, actually just on the brush tip shape, my apologies, I have to go back. There are a few things I can do with this brush. So there it is. So now watch what I could do. I can change the size, which we know how to do already, obviously. I can change up the flip, the X and the Y. See how it kind of gives you the, uh, 
the changes that are going to be made here in this area showing us what could happen and I'm just going to see how this changes things up a little bit if I flip the X or the Y if I change up the angle now I can change the angle here or I can just click on this diagram and it changes up the roundness and then I can move the angle for me so if it's just a round brush I can't change up the angle but if I change up the roundness now I can change up the angle which will make more sense change it up even more, change up that angle, change up that roundness, and now all of a sudden it's really drastically changed. Now here's another interesting one. I could change up the spacing. The spacing is kind of interesting too, kind of scatters it a little bit more. So here's the spacing, because when I cl click once, that is my brush. If I continue to click and drag, that is what happens with that with this particular brush. If I space it out, now it's going to take that and space out this individual click and now it spaces out that brush even more okay so that's how the spacing works now different brushes are going to do different things but you can get a sense of what would happen if i did space these things out okay so now that is it spaces out the impression that this brush makes on the canvas now i'm going to go to shape dynamics and take a better look at that because brush tip shapes is quite a few things you can do choose your brush tip change the size flip the X and Y, change up your angle and roundness. Uh, the softness uh, is not available on this particular brush, but we can change up the spacing as well. Now I'm gonna go to Shape Dynamics. Now we see this word a lot, we're gonna see a lot of jitter. So the jitter is gonna allow me to go from one scale to another. So a rate of one to uh, obviously 1% to 100%. So the level, so let's actually see what that means. I'm gonna click on the size jitter and right now that's where I'm at. I'm gonna bring this brush down, brush size down a little bit. And I'm gonna bring this size up. Now watch what happens down here. I'm gonna also bring back the uh, spacing so I can see a little bit better, there we go. And I'm gonna to go to my dynamics. I'm gonna change up the jitter. Now watch what happens. If I change up the size, so what's going to happen, it's going to, let me do actually bring back a little bit more of that spacing. It's going to change up how that size changes when I click and drag. So if I click and drag, I'm going to get bigger and smaller versions of it. It's going to, it's going to change it up quite a bit. So I, do I get more or less small or more or less big ones? Does it keep it the same or does it change it up? Now, obviously, that's just a start. I can change up the have a minimum diameter, or I could have bring it up quite a bit more. I can change up my angle. If the angle of each of those impressions changes, see how it changes down here. I could change up the angle, how each of those angles will change. So really changing the dynamics of this individual brush. The roundness, I'll go from different roundness and uh, a minimum roundness as well. If I want to keep to a minimum roundness, or less and it goes back to that kind of angled brush I had there if I click okay so a lot of different things once again flip X flip Y we can see how it's changing it's just subtle changes right now but it does kind of change it up a little bit brush protection I believe that would change it and keep a similar uh, protect the brush in a certain way I'm really not 100% on that one now going back to the idea of the stylus you could actually control this level of um, your level of control with obviously the pen pressure with the stylus, stylus wheel, pen, that's how it would work. Now me with the mouse, I don't have that, so I'm just gonna shut it off. And now I could have these certain controls and how all these work together for this new brush that I've made. So that's how that works. The same thing happens here. Do I control it with the pen pressure or other different ways? That's how that works. Now I'm gonna click on scattering. I'm able to add scattering. Now watch what happens with scattering. If I click, and I'm gonna move this over here now, I'm on scattering. If I click and drag, everything is fine. If I add scatter, watch what happens to my brush. All those individual little almost bristles, if you will, are going to change. And now they're going to scatter up in a different way. If I click and drag, they're kind of all over the place. They've scattered. I can control it once again with the pen pressure or not. I can really make it scatter quite a bit or just a little bit. I can play around with the count of how many times it scatters. And it actually says it right here. When you hover over any of these, it says what it actually kind of does. It sets the tip count, sets the uh, randomness of the count. So I'm just going to bring this up as well. And we could kind of see down here what it starts to do. So there's a lot of control over just one little area, one little setting of scattering. So a lot of different things it could do as well. The texture, so this particular brush already had a texture on it. Now the thing about this, you could actually add textures to a brush. There's some default ones here, uh, trees, grass, and water. 
uh, this kind of ones down here are some of these default ones that just add a little extra texture to um, give you that dry effect. Now you can scale how much of that texture you want, the brightness of the texture, so quite a bit less or quite a bit more, uh, the contrast of that texture, uh, and then you can play around with the depth of the texture, uh, a minimum depth, and the depth jitter, how often that depth changes. So where did my uh, texture go here? So I could play around with a lot of different areas here. A minimum depth, a certain amount of depth, which is very strong, almost kind of turns it into a wet brush. And I, once again, playing around with the contrast and brightness, you can start to see a little extra if I bring down the brightness, bring down the contrast, give myself a little bit more space here. You start to see some of these areas inside the brush show through more, which is pretty interesting. And how much of that brush is there. Let me bring down that scale. And you start to see it break up even more. So just in one texture setting here, a lot has changed. So it's quite nice. Now I'm just going to go to the dual brush. The idea behind the dual brush is putting two brushes together. So currently, this brush, I had another one selected here, which was here. I had this one, and there was a crosshatch brush that I had selected as well, which is showing this crosshatchiness here. But if I add another brush, which it doesn't seem like it did much, I want to see which brush could actually add a little more. So you're actually painting two brushes at the same time. It's kind of like holding two brushes at the same time. I just kind of want to see down here, if I add a certain brush, does it add a big change and at the moment seeing how it kind of adds a little bit more I want to see if that does something a little bit more yeah you see how it adds a little extra on the sides there with that it adds so I'm painting two brushes at the same time so there's a lot of flex you have here let me see if this one adds anything not really not really that noticeable but i'm sure if you play around with different brushes and different settings you'll see more uh, it'll be more noticeable for you so you could add two brushes at the same time which is really really cool okay so next the color dynamics this is an interesting one too so i'm going to be able to change the color now let me change the color up right now okay and now what i can do with the color dynamics is play around with that now i not only do i have to play just to show you click around on the yes i want to add those if i just click on the name now it brings up the new options I could change and it says, yes, you can do it, I'm adding it. So now I'll color dynamics, I click on the name and it brings up that information, so here I am. So apply per tip, yeah, okay, foreground, background, jitter. So right now there's a green and white. So let me just change up this white as well to a different color. I'm gonna change it up to, let's just say this for now is okay. So I have the green and purple. So watch what it does if I have very little. This is what it does. It's pretty crazy. There's a lot going on. I'm going to bring all these down just so I can say 0%. Okay, there we go. Because I was playing around with this a little bit earlier. That's my grays. Not much going on because I brought all this down. The huge inner saturation. So the saturation and brightness are down. So if I'm going to bring up my saturation to uh, 100%, that's saturated. You can't really tell. Uh, my hue is what I want. How much of that hue do I want? Oh, that's not helping me out much either, is it? I think it's the purity I need to bring up. There's the purity. Okay. So the hue, there it goes. It stays within that hue, but even now the foreground background, you know, the foreground has very a lot and the background has very little. But if I bring that up to say 50%, I should get a little bit of both. There we go. I get the purple and the green and how it mixes together. If I say, no, I want more background, then I'm going to get more background, more of those purples come out. Okay. The hue jitter. Let's see what the hue jitter does. If I start moving the hue jitter about halfway, what does that do? Well, okay, it starts adding in more, a lot more hues. If I bring it up even more, it's going to add even more hue. And so all these different colors around here. So you know what? I don't want a lot of hue jitter. I want to keep it as is. So that purple and the green. Saturation jitter. How much of the saturation do I want it to change? Not much. I want to keep within a certain area of saturation. So we're looking at this HSB right now, right? HSB, we're seeing that. Uh, so I don't want to change the saturation a lot, or I do want it to be very saturated and have a lot of changes. The jitter, the changes in the saturation. How about the brightness? I want very different levels of brightness in this. I'm going to bring it over here a little bit more. So now I'm going to have a lot of different a lot of different things going on in this brush. And obviously the purity, how pure it's gonna stay, 
uh, or less of that. And if I do that, you'll see obviously that purity issue there. So let me go to 0% because there's a high level of minus 100 or plus 100. Okay, there we go. So that is color dynamics. Now if I go to transfer, transfer is kind of like that flow we had up here. How much of the ink gets um, put on, or the ink, the paint gets put onto the canvas. So I'm actually going to shut off color dynamics. That, that's, that was a little too much. I don't want to do that. I want to stay with where I am with just the one color for now. And now I transfer, I can really control the opacity jitter. So right now, this is what I have. If I control the opacity, bring it up to 100, it's going to change different levels of opacity. Now, once again, I can control that with pen pressure. I'm just going to say off for now. I have control with my opacity. I'm also going to shut off my dual brush and get rid of that extra little thing there. But we can see what happens now when we get rid of our different ones, get rid of the texture, get rid of the scattering, get rid of shape dynamics, see what happens there. And we could actually say, no, I don't want texture. I don't want texture, but I do want dual brush. And maybe you can start to see what dual brush does, not as much, just a little bit, but we can see how that helps. But I just want to get a sense so we could show you what each of these does. So shutting some off and turning them on will help you out. So transfer. So we saw what opacity did. Now I'm going to bring that down a little bit, and there we go. Now I'm also going to say my flow jitter, how much of the flow is going to come out. Now this one, then once again, a little harder to tell. If I bring my flow down really low, it's how much of the ink actually comes out. Or the, I keep saying ink, my apologies. I mean paint. I'm so used to ink. Uh, to click in, if I draw that, how much flow comes out, how much of the ink comes, uh, the paint comes out. Okay. Now, if I continue to build on top, I'm not letting go of my click. It continues to build and build and build. Okay. If I click once, that's what happens. Click once, that's what happens. If I click and continue to drag over top of itself, it'll eventually get up to 100% and fill in those areas because I had some at opacity as well. So the flow is the change in flow when I paint. Uh, if I want very little flow, I want it all to stay the same, consistent, and if I want a lot of flow change, obviously it'll change it up even more. Now there is a wetness jitter and a mixed jitter, but currently I don't have those set for this particular brush, so they wouldn't even allow me to do that. The brush pose. Looking at the brush pose, the idea is changing up the angle and the rotation of it, so I'm going to go to my brush pose down here. And here I am. So what I can do here now, obviously, is play around with the X and the Y, but I might have to go back up here to go to my angle first and my roundness and my angle. And let's, uh, that angle is there, and let me go back now to brush pose. This might help me out a bit. So here I am there, nice uh, changes there. If this doesn't change, see what happens there. This is my normal with no tilt X, with no on the X tilt, and this is a lot of tilt. Or if I can go in the middle, Oh, I see it has minus 100 plus 100. So right in the middle, this is my regular. And if I go all the way with the other way, it's gonna give me very similar to this, but the other opposite X. Now the tilt Y, same idea. If I tilt a lot Y, it's gonna do that. It's gonna tilt the Y axis. If I do uh, somewhere around here, it's gonna tilt it in a certain way. Uh, and then same with the rotation. If I bring up very little rotation, it's gonna leave it as is, which I've had. If I bring up the rotation even higher, it's going to rotate quite a bit more. All right, very nice. I love the way this brush is turning out, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then override rotation with your pen pressures, uh, you could do that, but I don't think I have access to that. Uh, and what I could do with that, no, I don't think I have no pressure because nothing's gonna happen there. Okay, so that was our brush pose. Now those are the last ones we could actually also have settings for. The brush tip shape, the shape dynamics, scattering, texture, dual brush color dynamics, transfer, and brush pose. These next ones are just things I could turn on or off. So if I add noise, I don't know if this does much for me in certain brushes. Once again, certain brushes will show you a little bit more. Some brushes will show you a little bit uh, a little bit less. So if I add the noise to it, which would be adding kind of like that extra texture, it doesn't really do much for me. If I click it off, not a huge difference. If I zoom in a little bit more, I guess I could notice a little bit uh, change here, but not much. Um, yeah, not much happened there with this particular brush. If I click on noise, I'll click off. Wet edges, so if I even look down here with my noise on, you can see it didn't really do too much to add noise. 
And it's kind of interesting why I don't have control over the noise, like a setting here, but that's okay. Wet edges, you see what it did just there. If I click on, if I click off of wet edges, this is what I have. If I click on wet edges, this is what it does. It kind of almost like blends it a little bit more and creates an even more interesting effect with the wet edges. Once again, I don't have any control over how wet it gets or dry it gets or anything like that, but still a lot of control, which is great. The build up. So this was kind of an interesting one too, where if I just click once, that's what I get. Build up is an idea like an airbrush effect. If I click on build up once, what it'll do, I click once and it builds and builds and builds just like airbrush. And that's the same idea here. So if I click off, watch this icon here. If I click off of build up, well, that shuts off because that's exactly what it is. The build up idea is you click once, don't let go, and it builds and builds and builds. If you click off of build up, click once, that's it. It's just one click, that's all you get. Uh, the smoothing idea is interesting because sometimes it works. It shows well, sometimes it doesn't. Smoothing is also up here in your settings, your, your control panel. So I'm gonna click smoothing on, which it's, it's already been on, and I'm just gonna go like this and that's fine. If I click smoothing off, usually what happens, I can have even more control where Photoshop doesn't control my level of smoothing. It doesn't try to smooth it out for me. Now this brush is hard to tell, it doesn't do it really well. But really, if I did a big zigzag, Photoshop would control that smoothing and keep it nice and tight. Without smoothing, it lets me go to that full extent of that full zigzag, but that's okay. And then the protect texture, I'm not 100% sure on this one either. It seems to me that it would protect the actual texture I've had in there or the original texture of the brush, I'm not sure. And of course, once again, I can lock these things. So this is everything that this brush settings has to offer. A lot of different brushes I have as well. So here's my new brush with all the different uh, changes to it. And I can now also, like I said, look at different brushes that I have. Uh, I'll go to my, uh, where is that, uh, the Mega Pack. I had a lot in there. And I could click on uh, Inkbox and click on some interesting brushes here. I can click, and once again, I can change up this brush is a broad paintbrush and I'm able to, right now it currently has shape dynamics, texture, dual brush, transfer, noise, and smoothing attached to it. But I could obviously take some of those things off, make a new brush out of it and kind of play around with that. But some of these brushes, you're gonna have a lot of fun with. You can make your own brushes, download your own brushes. Obviously the Kyle T. Webster brushes, there are a ton of brushes. You'll definitely find something for yourself in there. Uh, but this is how the brush settings also work for you. So you could really play around with um, a, a high, high level and so many different attributes and characteristics of brushes. Like I said, trying to like being in an art store, you have access to every single kind of brush possible. And not only that, but the way it handles color, uh, the way it handles texture. It's like this one brush you have and you can change the bristles and the tip any way you want, a million different ways. And this is definitely the access to get you that. So uh, have fun painting.